The story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. And whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereof. It's 43 Counting degrees in the capital of sacred trust. I will exercise my art solely for the cure. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. The first. And now, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, the nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Dr. Kildare, there's a Mr. Brennan here to see you. Brennan? I don't recall any... He said he's from your hometown. He's a boy about 20 years old. Oh, oh, sure, Dick Brennan. Lives on a farm up there with his grandparents. Send him in, Parker. All right, Dr. Kildare. Just go right in, Mr. Brennan. Thanks, Dick, well, talk about surprises. How are you, Dr. Kildare? You know, I couldn't even place your name for a moment. Well, it's been quite a while, all right. Three years or so. <laughs> Have a seat, Dick. How's everything up in Dartford? Okay, I guess. I, I've been down here for a couple of months. Oh? Dr. Kildare, I'm in a jam. Jam? Yeah, about two hours ago, I stole $5,000. Well, yeah. maybe you'd better tell me about it. I got fed up with the farm, Dr. Kildare, so I came down here to look for a job. I didn't find one, and I ran out of money a few days ago. I had to give up my room this morning. So? Yesterday, I phoned up Kessel and Conrad, their importers. They had a help wanted ad in the paper. And this Mr. Kessel told me on the phone to come in at 10 o'clock this morning, so that's what I did. Mm-hmm. It's a little shop down south of Wall Street. There wasn't anybody in the front, so I walked back to the office, and that was empty, too. Oh, then what? You see, this safe was there, standing wide open, and the money was in plain sight. I didn't even stop to think. I... Well, I took it and walked out. That's all. That's all? Well, what else could you have done besides to set the building on fire? I don't know why I did it. I'm sorry, Dr. Kildare, but I don't know who else to come to. Dick, your granddad built me the first bobsled I ever had. He used to coast down that hill below the dam, remember? Sure. If he found out about this, it'd kill him. Oh, you, you can't find out. Something's got to be done about it. Well, I'm not sure anything can be done. It depends entirely on the shop owner. But, but Dr. Kildare, I, I'm in a spot. You're the only one I can turn All right, to, isn't it? Some... All right, I'll see what I can do. Kildare, there's no reason why you have to go out somewhere right this minute. I want to talk over these charts with you. Well, this won't take long, Dr. Gillespie. I ought to be back here within an hour. Well, what is it that's so confounded important it can't wait 20 minutes? Oh, it's just a, just a business matter. Nothing really important, you know, but I... I guess I'd better get it over with. Uh, Jimmy, what are you up to? Up to? Why, nothing, nothing at all. I, oh, hello, Parker. I got that Brennan boy put to bed down in 417, Dr. Kildare. Oh, you did. But I'll need a little more information on the case, though, before I can fill out... What Brennan boy is this, Kildare? Oh, just a kid from back home. He came in a while ago. What's wrong with him? Well, he's, uh, he's entered for observation. Observation? Confound What do you think's wrong with him? Well, it's, uh... It's complicated, Dr. Gillespie. I'll discuss the whole thing with you when I get back. Yeah, now, wait a sec. This won't take very long. Uh, Parker, he's up to something. Oh, well, now, I wouldn't say that's true, necessarily. You didn't say it. I did. You wouldn't have sense enough to realize it. Well... Well, never mind now, Parker. Shut up and see if you can find my hat. <laughs> Castle 
Norman Conrad, importers to be it. I'm sorry, mister. The shop's closed for the afternoon. Oh, yes, I know, officer. Well, <laughs> Dr. Kildare, say, I haven't seen you since you took that slug out of Dan Cassidy. How have you been? I'm fine, Captain Daggett. <laughs> Are you in charge of this case? Yeah, that's right. How did you know about it? Hasn't hit the papers yet. Because I've brought the money back. What? Here you are. $5,000. I see. Five grand, huh? What about the kid? Is he with you? Kid? What kid? Kid that stole it. Kessel gave me a pretty good description of him. Around 19 to 20, 160 pounds, light brown hair, gray suit, blue tie. Am I close? I, uh, I guess maybe I'd better have a talk with the owner. Yeah, I think maybe you're better. Especially since it's 50,000 bucks that's missing. 50,000? Oh, Mr. Kessel, could you step out here a minute, please? Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Neither one of the old boys trusts the banks through most of their business in cash. Kessel's the partner the kid stuck up. Now, oh, wait a minute. Was I correct, Captain Daggett, in believing I heard you call me? Uh, yes, that's right, Mr. Kessel. Mr. Kessel, this is Dr. Kildare from Blair Hospital. How do you do that? How are you, sir? Kildare is a first-class doctor, but he's got a bad habit of sticking his neck out for people. He, uh, brought back 5,000 bucks of your money. 5,000? May I inquire as to the whereabouts of the rest of it, Dr. Kildare? Oh, yes, you may inquire, but I'm afraid I can't tell you at the moment. Mr. Kessel, I wonder if you'd tell Dr. Kildare briefly just what happened here this morning. Again? You want if you don't mind. Well, uh, my partner, Benjamin Conrad, went down the street for coffee about 10 o'clock. A few minutes later, this boy came in and walked back towards the office. As I came out to meet him, I saw he had a gun in his hand. A gun? He made me open the safe and then forced me into a closet and shut the door. It has a snap lock, you know. It can't be opened from the inside. And you were locked in for about 20 minutes. Is that right, Mr. Kessel? Yes. Why, I might have suffocated in my heart, you know, and, and high blood pressure, as well as a thyroid. Can be... Oh, good heavens, I almost forgot. You'll have to excuse me, gentlemen. I, I should have taken one of my capsules five minutes ago. Well, that's about it, Doctor. When Conrad got back and let him out, 50 grand was gone from the safe. Well, oh, that's not quite the way I heard it. Yeah, so I gathered. Well, I guess you'd better tell me where I can pick the kid up, huh? Captain Daggett, I don't think I'm ready to do that yet. Not until I talk with him again. Oh, now, look here, right? Well, Dr. Gillespie, what is this, a medical convention? How are you, Daggett? Kildare. Well, I just happened to be passing by and saw you in here, so... You mean you followed me from the hospital? Oh, ridiculous. I did no such thing. It's... It's what have I walked into? Well, I think the beginning of an argument. This shop was held up at 10 o'clock this morning, Dr. Gillespie. Kildare is apparently trying to hide out the boy who did it. Hey, that right, Kildare? More or less. Seem to be two conflicting stories here. I want some more facts before I turn anybody over to the police. Now, suppose you let us take care of the facts, Doctor. That's our job. Only you've decided the case is solved. I'm not so sure. Why not, Jimmy? Because I simply can't believe that boy was lying, that's all. It's not your business to decide whether he's lying or not, Doctor. I'm sorry, Captain Daggett. Oh, I give up. Well, what seems to be the next move? Well, I don't have any choice about it. If Kildare sticks to this bullheadedness, I'll have to book him on his own admission as a material witness. Oh, nonsense. He's not going to abscond with the loot. No, but this kid that pulled the stick up might. I'll stand good for him. I'm afraid it isn't that simple. But I'm afraid it is. Come on, Jimmy. Let's get back to hospital. Okay. Hey, now, wait a minute. Now, if you lock up Kildare, you'll have to lock me up, too. You know I can't do that. The commissioner's a personal friend of yours. He'd blow his top. And you can reach either of us at Blair Hospital, Daggett. So help me if that kid gets away because of this, I'll run you both in. Thanks for the rescue. Yeah. Hometown boy. Couldn't possibly be lying. Jimmy, why in the tarnation do you want to go out on a limb for a kid like that but with, without even knowing whether he's guilty or not? I don't know. Why did you? Well, I... Uh, oh, confound it. Come on. I got a taxi down here waiting with a meter running. But I am telling the truth, Dr. Gillespie. I, I swear I am. Dr. Kildare, you just gotta believe me. All right, Dick, take it easy. I don't know, Dr. Gillespie. 
Well, whichever story you take, it, it doesn't make much sense. It happened just like I said. I didn't change one single thing. If Kessel's telling the truth, Dick would have to be crazy to come here with $5,000 and ask me to try to straighten things out. I don't know how he got my description or any of the rest of it, but I didn't do what he says. I swear I didn't. Oh! Oh, there you are. Well, Nosy, what do you want? I just wanted to tell you that Dr. Carew has been looking all over the hospital for you, too. Mm, what does that nincompoop have on his half-baked mind? I don't know. He's bought all the evening papers, and he's just simply furious. Oh, well, if he's only furious, let him work on it a while. <laughs> when he really gets upset, he starts foaming at the gardenias. <laughs> When I think of it, I get so ragingly angry that I could just... I could just... All right, Kuro, go ahead and just get it over with. A whole hour and a half simply worrying myself into a breakdown while you two sit across the street at Sullivan's Grill eating a steak. Well, it was a thick steak, Dr. Kuro. <laughs> and all these headlines staring me in the face. I tell you, it means ruin for Bear Hospital. Utter ruin. Oh, uh-huh. now, I think it's rather good publicity. Good. Look at this one. Staff doctor at Blair Hospital involved in hold-up case. Do you see what they say? Involved. Hmm. Dr. Gillespie, that's a bad photograph. It isn't my best profile. Well, how many profiles have you got? Gentlemen, please. This is anything but humorous. You're absolutely right, Caro. A picture like that, it, 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 it's a downright insult. Hmm. Maybe I'll have to get a lawyer and sue somebody. Maybe. I have already contacted our legal department, though heaven only knows what they can possibly do. Dr. Kildare, how could you manage to create such a scandal? Well, it was, it was something like a snowball. It started very small. Yes, yes, yes. 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 With a grandfather who built sleds. Sleds? Hmm. I failed to see what sleds had to do with this. Yes. Dr. Kildare, that, that boy, that, that Lennon boy, he just up and left here without a word to anybody. He what? Just... Put on his clothes and walked out and then left a note for you. A note? What did it say, Parker? That he doesn't want to cause any more trouble, so he's... Well, how should I know what it says? It wasn't addressed to me. Ah, uh, well, that's a great way not to cause any more trouble. That boy you're talking about, why, that must be the criminal. And he was right here in the hospital. Now, Carew, keep your vest on and your powder dry. Oh, dear heaven. Now the fat fires. Yeah. Crazy young fool. Why couldn't he wait a I'll get it. Kildare speaking. Captain Tang at Precinct Headquarters. Well, Kildare, I suppose you know the papers got hold of this somehow. Yes, I saw some of the headlines, Captain Tang. Yeah, well, they're putting the heat on us, so we got to have that kit. Oh? When? The commissioner says 9 o'clock in the morning. I'll meet you over there at the hospital. But, Captain Daggett, you see how... 9 a.m., Doctor. Well, that's that. Daggett will be here at 9 in the morning to take young Brennan into custody. But how can he take him? I I mean, if the boy is... Oh, dear, dear, dear. For 30 cents, I could cut my throat. You can get more. Oh, dear. (laughs) You know, Dr. Gillespie, it might be a good idea if we went across to Sullivan's and had another stage. Uh, I understand the food at the city jail is not too good. We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. The American... Continue with the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Personally, I think both of you should just stop worrying about it. My intuition tells me that everything will turn out for the best. Pollyanna Parker has spoken. Nevertheless, nevertheless, Dr. Gillespie. Rely on a woman's intuition and you can't go wrong. But you can go to jail. Oh, pooh. Something's bound to turn out. Yes, and that something is Captain Daggett at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. And when we tell him his prisoner has walked out, handcuffs. Look for the silver lining, Dr. Kildare. Look for the silver lining. Parker, I've enjoyed very few pleasures in my frugal and ascetic life. Would you like to do something for me to make me excruciatingly happy? Why, of course, Dr. Gillespie. Just anything you say. Well, then shut up and get out of here. Oh! And take that disgusting optimism along with you, little sunbeam. Wretched man! 
Yeah. One thing in this whole mess that I'm convinced of. Mr. Kessel is lying about what happened. This was some kind of a frame-up, and young Brennan played right into it. Yeah. Well, it could be. Either the two partners are in it together, or Kessel planned it as a way of stealing Conrad's half of the company's funds. Yeah. That could be why he asked Dick to come in at 10 o'clock this morning, the time when he'd be fairly certain his partner would be out for coffee. He counted on $5,000 in an apparently empty store being a great enough temptation. Well, if that was a scheme, Jimmy, it certainly was a good one. I, I, I can't see any way to shake it. Uh, not unless Castle could be forced to tell the truth. Hmm. I wish I could give him a shot of sodium amethyst and then ask him a few questions. True serum, huh? <laughs> not a chance, Jimmy. You'd have to get his permission in the first place and he'd never give it. Not if he knew it, but there might be a chance... He worries about his health, thinks he has a half a dozen things wrong with him. Now, if he could only be made to believe that. Yeah, yeah, I'm way ahead of you, way ahead of you, especially in regard to the ethics involved. If it kept Dick Brennan from being framed into prison, I think the end would justify them. And if it didn't work? Well, what am I worrying about? I got nothing to lose but my professional reputation. (laughs) Go to it, Jimmy. Let's have a real Roman holiday. Yes, certainly you may come in, Dr. Kildare, but... Thank you, Mr. Kessel. I, I must say, though, that I'm mildly amazed at this... Uh, at this intrusion, yes, I can understand that. I don't mind if we sit down here. Well, I hardly see, but... Well, that's right. Now, look, Dr. Kildare, I'm afraid Mr. I'm... Kessel, have you ever considered the possibility that you might be a very sick man? What? I realize you must feel a certain amount of ill will because of my... my interference this afternoon, but I... I hope you can forget that for a moment and consider my visit a professional one, if you will. Dr. Kildare, what did you mean by saying that that I'm a sick man? I didn't say you were. I said you might be. But uh, uh, when was the last time you had a complete physical checkup? Why, it's uh, been years. I but... thought so. It's my heart, I know. It, it's my heart. Mr. Kessel, please don't excite yourself. Oh, yes, you're, you're right. That's that's very bad for it. I've been expecting it for years. I, I've taken pills to say... Oh, the it. worst thing you could have done. A person should never try to diagnose and treat his own case. Oh, I know. I, I realize that. Mm, you can handle your own money if you like, but you shouldn't try to handle your own health. Uh, tell me, doctor, is it is it too late? Well, no, I wouldn't say that. Uh, there must be symptoms, I suppose, that you've noticed this afternoon. Uh, just, uh, just how bad is it? I'm sorry, but I never ventured a diagnosis in a serious case without making the first thorough examination. Now, if you'd care to have Dr. Gillespie and me check you over... Yes, yes, I would. I'll make all the necessary arrangements this week. This week? (laughs) Mr. Kessel, I don't want to frighten you, but I have known cases to end disastrously from putting off treatment too long. Indeed, it's it's as serious as that. I can only urge you most strongly to report to us at Blair Hospital no later than 8 o'clock tomorrow morning. All right, all right, Dr. Kildare. I'll be there. Good. And now, don't worry about it. Once we get the facts, we can decide on the type of treatment that's necessary. And with your cooperation, I'm sure we can find out all we need to know. I want you, both of you. But no, you wouldn't listen to me. And now you're in it good. Ah, take it easy, Dad. Oh, I'll take it easy, all right. Commissioner or no commissioner, there are going to be some heads fall over this, and I don't mean mine. Kildare, I think he's referring to us. Then you think exactly right. Oh, dear, dear. I just knew it was going to be ruin. Utter ruin. Have another aspirin, Carew. Thank you. Now, come on, Daggett. Let's settle down and put this gown on. With a little luck, we may get this mess straightened out. I'll have no part of this. I'm leaving right now, and I want it clearly understood that I am not involved. Yeah. You guys are really asking for it. You weren't satisfied with just letting a criminal escape. Now you've tricked Kessel in here, and you got him doped up with something. Exactly how far do you plan to go? Far enough to get the truth out of him. As a matter of fact, Mr. Kessel came here this morning of his own free will... And ask for a physical examination. We're going to give him one, that's all. Sure, with this truth serum or whatever it is. Well, that's only a popular idea, Captain Daggett. Uh, Sodium amytol may deaden the inhibitory functions of the mind to some extent, but mainly it it relaxes the patient, makes him drowsy and lazy. And under those conditions, if the questioning is properly handled, he may find it easier to tell the truth than to make up a lie. Well, 
As long as you're dead set on doing it, maybe I'd better go in and keep an eye on you. How do I know you're not planning to cut Kessel's throat? <laughs> Pulse rate 64. Uh, make a note of that, Doctor. Uh, Doctor Smith. Um, yeah, let's turn back this sheet now. How do you feel, Mr. Kessel? All right, I suppose. Yes, yes, I feel all right. All right. Now, just lie back there and relax. Nothing to worry about. No, nothing to worry about. Would you hand me that stethoscope, Miss Parker? Oh, of course, Dr. Gillespie. Yeah. Here you are. Yeah, thank you. Now, breathe deeply. You ever notice any difficulty in your breathing, Mr. Kessel? Uh, no, no, not at all. I see. Well, what about business and financial difficulty? No, no difficulty. Mm, some of these questions may sound strange, Mr. Kessel, but I'm sure you understand how important they are in solving your problem. Oh, yes, yes, I understand. Good. Now, do you feel any pain when I press here? No, no pain. Here? No, no. Was this where the gun was pressed against your side? No, it wasn't there. Oh, that's right, I forgot. There really wasn't any gun, was there? No, there wasn't any gun. Uh, and what about headaches, Mr. Kessel? Are you bothered a great deal by them? No, I... I don't think so. Well, I thought you told us you had a terrific headache uh, right after you took the money. Oh, no. No, I felt fine. Well, that helps a lot. Make a note of that, Dr. Smith. Oh. Uh, maybe the headache occurred after you disposed of the money, Mr. Kessel. No, no, I... I mailed it in the box in front of the store, and I... I still felt fine, but... But I... Now, don't worry about a thing. We're coming along fine. There's a definite hypertensoid, but it's not a serious one at all. Oh, really? Now, just a few questions more, and I think we'll have our finger on the right answer. All right. Anything. Before we can plan any kind of treatment, we absolutely must know where you sent the money. Oh, it was to an assumed name, uh, Jonathan Bidwell, General Delivery, Times Square Station. And it's still there? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's still there. Good. You got that down, Dr. Smith? Uh-huh. Kildare, you know, aside from everything else, this man has a perfect heart. Been listening to it with a stethoscope. Why... Why did you ask about... Uh, I shouldn't... Now, now, relax, Mr. Kessel. We're going to put you to bed now. Let you sleep for a while. And by the time you wake up, I think we'll have a cure. All worked out. Yeah. In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Well, Jimmy, one might say that we've had a busy and eventful day. And it included getting out of a fairly tough spot, you know. <laughs> I wonder if cats will ever realize just how the police located that package of money. <laughs> Ten to one, he has no memory at all of our questioning him. As far as he knows, we made a routine examination and... Come in. Hello, Dr. Kildare. Well, Dick, I've been hoping you'd come back. I just saw a newspaper saying how Mr. Kessel's the one who's guilty. Is that true? Yes, it's true. Of course, you did steal $5,000, Dick. Yeah, I know. I ought to have my head examined. No, but you ought to learn to use it a little better. Dr. Kildare, if I do get out of I'm going to go straight back home to the farm. Good idea, Dick. Well, now go to bed and get some sleep. We'll talk the whole thing over in the morning. All right. And take the same room you had. Only this time, don't run away. I won't. Thanks. Good night, Dick. You know, Jimmy, he seems to be a pretty good kid after all. Oh, sure. He'll be all right. Yeah. He's lucky, too, in a way. This lesson he learned came out a lot cheaper than it might have. Well, it's all due to having a grandfather who builds good sled. Ah, forget that. No, 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 no. It worries me, Jimmy. I'm wondering how many other people may have built sleds for you. You have, you have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Dr. Kildare is presented by arrangement with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of Malaya, 
Starring Spencer Tracy, James Stewart, Valentina Cortesa, Sidney Greenstreet, and John Hodiak. This program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Ted Osborne, Bill Conrad, Bill Tracy, and Herb Butterfield. Dick Joy speaking.